I, I've got to admit, when you grow up in a country as big as Australia, when you get to a country this small, it does, uh, it does play with your mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm not joking. Like, if you went to Australia, you'd go, what the hell is going on? And when you get here, and I saw that sign in Dublin going Belfast, 188 miles or something, I'm going, that's, that's the other end. <laughs> Is that a driveway or something? <laughs> it is, it psychologically plays with your mind. Like, there's blokes in Australia that could mow Ireland. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know. And so we'd go and do these shows in these villages with these other Irish comics. And we get to this village one year and I, I, I'm with my mate, uh, this Irish comic. I go, so what's it like here? He goes, oh, it's a bit inbred. I said, what? He goes, this area here, you know, it's a bit inbred. I'm going, well, how, how can you be inbred in a country this small, man? I mean, uh, how lazy do you have to be? <laughs> <laughs> you can't get on your bike and go 20 minutes up the road to fuck someone off from your family. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, see Australia, you know, where's the next town? 5,000 miles. Well, you fuck your mum. Fair enough. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> well, I enjoyed it here. I grew up in Australia, and uh, some of you probably been there. Some of you probably think you'd like to go there, and uh... but I just didn't suit the place for various reasons, stuff like that. And I was I was always interested in heavy metal music, and uh, which you just don't really get into in Australia. It's, you know, they like sport, they don't like heavy metal. So I wanted to come to Europe, and I love I love heavy metal. I played in bands for years. I. Uh, I like heavy metal and uh, black metal, thrash metal, uh, death metal, and uh, Enya, actually. Which is, uh, yeah, man. Everyone thinks it's a bit of a joke, really. But, you know, most people haven't listened to Slayer for eight hours in one day. And, uh, yeah, you get up to that type of nonsense, you do need something to relax in the afternoon. You know? <laughs> and I did that joke in London one night. This big, big English geezer, he stands up and he goes, I fucking hate Enya. You hate Enya. What are you talking about? George Bush is alive, man. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to hate, hate positively. <laughs> you see? You hate Enya, man. You get George Bush, Tony Blair, Condoleezza Rice, Dick Cheney, Henry Kissinger. You see, these are genocidal, kid-killing war criminals. And uh, this is Enya. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hate properly, mate. Hate demons. If I had a fuck, do you hate Enya? It's just silence coloured in. You know? That's all it is. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> pissed off at Enya. <laughs> it's like hating a waterfall. <laughs> it's like looking at a flower open and go, that's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Well, the whole world's turning weird as far as I'm concerned. I was on tour in the UK for about three months straight, so I was in hotels. Now, I don't know if this has happened in Ireland. For some reason, in England, they've decided now that, you know, we're not allowed to open our, uh, the windows in hotel rooms anymore, right? And hotels, you know, they, they spin me out to begin with. For, for, for one reason, I've been in hotels for over 15 years now, being in bands and doing comedy, right? And you'd think that in this stage of human evolution, Perhaps hotels would have worked out that if you're going to leave complimentary items in a bathroom, in a hotel, maybe a small tube of toothpaste and a disposable toothbrush, that would come in handy. But for some reason, from Helsinki to Tasmania, they're under the illusion that we all want to have a shower cap. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in hotels yourself. It's a, you know, a shower cap. You've ever seen anyone in the car on the way to the airport, going on holidays, going, oh, fuck! <laughs> What's wrong? I forgot my shower cap! <laughs> I'm not going to Paris without the shower cap. I'm, turn the car around. I'm not fucking going. <laughs> Has anybody ever used the shower cap except to put over the smoke detector so you can enjoy yourself for five fucking minutes? Has anyone? <laughs> exactly. No. No one's used it. So I'm on the phone to my mate, he's Korean, he's a nutcase, he's always on the internet, so I'm having a bitch because I've been on the road for a year and I'm going a bit mental, right? So he's sitting there and I'm just whinging and he's on the internet and he goes, oh, he's looking up trivia about hotels. Suddenly he goes to me, oh, it says here, Steve, someone's done a survey and I've come up with the uh, statistic that apparently the most sperm-covered thing you'll find in a hotel room is the remote control. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
Don't, I, don't blame me. I don't think it's true anyway, really. I mean, it's not the most sperm-covered thing in my hotel room. That's, that's, that's usually me. So... And, uh... <laughs> you've been on the road a bit yourself, mate. And, uh, and I don't know which men are in hotel rooms jerking off and then going, right, I better just clean this up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stick it on the wall for later. That should come in handy. So, yeah, I've been in hotels and they're sitting there. They're, they're England, I don't know if they've started in Ireland. They've, had, they've made some law up now. You can't open the window, some kind of health and safety regulation. That you, we can't be trusted as adults to be in a hotel and open the windows. Right? And all the... Hotels in Great Britain, have, uh, the ones that the windows had open like this, put little brackets in up here, so that they go. <laughs> and all the windows that slide up and down like this, they put bolts in like this. So you uh, bring your window up to here. And this is how we are. Uh, we all sit in our free country. Right? <laughs> so all, all the people of England go on holidays now. They all, and whenever I'm in the hotel in England, looking out the window like this, I'm always thinking to myself, it's a, it's a good thing we all fought the Nazis, isn't it? <laughs> huh? Do you reckon? It's a good thing England fought the Nazis because, you know, and beat the Nazis, because imagine, you know, if they hadn't beat the Nazis, it'd probably, probably be like that, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, and now they beat the Nazis, so, uh, so we can have this. So I went downstairs, you know, like you would, to the woman on the front desk. I said, why can't I open the window in the hotel room? She goes, you might kill yourself. <laughs> I said, well, how bad is the fucking service? <laughs> she goes, no, nah, what if you decide to kill yourself? I said, well, why am I gonna decide to kill myself? She goes, I don't know, what if you decide to kill yourself? I said, well, I'll probably go to the NCP car park where there's nine stories of total concrete and it's free to get in. <laughs> she goes, what if you decide to kill yourself here? I said, well, that's going to be a little difficult for me, you know, because, you know, I'm on the ground floor. <laughs> well, what if you fall out of the window? Well, I'll, uh, I'll probably fucking get back up again, won't I? <laughs> She goes, how to make the laws, how to make the rules, you know? We don't want to find your body in the car park. I said, well, you know, you probably shouldn't be worried about finding my body. I said, the fact that I'm sitting in a hotel room, I can't smoke, I can't open a window, I'm wearing a shower cap with a remote control tucked to my chest. <laughs> maybe you should be worried about someone finding your body, shouldn't you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like you're slumped over the front desk with a complimentary biro stuck in the back of your fucking head. 